Good evening. Would everyone please rise for the prayer and the Pledge of Allegiance. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for a very smooth opening of school this year. We are grateful for the positive attitudes of our students, our parents, and employees. And we ask your blessings upon each as we work together to make this a great school year. Please protect us and our neighbors this week as Hurricane Laura approaches our coast. And be with us tonight as we make decisions for the children we serve and help us to remember that their needs always come first. These things we ask in your name. Amen. Amen. Ms. Jackson, would you lead us in the pledge, please? To the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please, Ms. Roche. Ms. Acevedo. Here. Mr. Campbell was not with us. Mr. Egan. Here. Ms. Jackson. Here. Ms. Lemoyne. Mr. England, yeah. Mr. Isar, here. Mr. Long, yeah. Mr. Smith is not with us, Mr. Warner, here. and Mr. Slight. Yeah. Thank you, Ms. Vote. Yes, before we go on to the uh, regular agenda, Mr. England, we have well, a point of privilege, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Isar. Um, I'd like to take a moment of silence for a couple of employees that passed away in, just recently. Um, we had an assistant principal at um, Andrew Jackson. She was here for many years. Um, Lynette King Ladner Zuli, she passed away. And also a bus driver who had over 20 years, there's Gerald Ponsetti, he passed away also. So if we could just have a moment for silence. But uh, Ms. Ladner, she, she, I went to school with her, you know, as far as I go. She was just a fine lady, and the JT, her husband, was a fine gentleman. So uh, our hearts and our prayers go out to those families. Thank you. And at this time, um, unfortunately, I'd like to ask for a, um, a moment of silence also. Uh, Miss Polly Renshaw has passed, and um, if any of you know Miss Renshaw, she was just a heart of gold, and she loved children, she loved education. She taught many years as an English teacher. Um, she was um, also an assist, uh, a supervisor, then an assistant superintendent. Um, she, I don't know. I don't know how many years total she had with us, but it had to be at over 40. And um, we're deeply saddened by her loss, also. So, if you would keep the Renshaw family in your in your thoughts and prayers, and our hearts go out to the Renshaw family for Miss Polly Renshaw. In a moment of silence, please. Thank you, Miss um, Miss Lucia. And uh, you know these three people were a very important part of our school system. Mm -hmm. You know, bus driver Mr. Bunt said he was mm -hmm. for over 20 years did a remarkable uh, job uh, with our kids. I mean, Miss Ladner, as the assistant principal of Andrew Jackson, uh, was just just a gem I mean she she was a wonderful administrator a wonderful teacher gave a lot to the school system she and her husband both worked within the St. Bernard Parish Public Schools and then later on after she retired she moved to Mississippi and I think she was a principal at a school in Mississippi so it was in in her blood uh, Miss Renshaw I, I can't say enough about Miss Renshaw when I moved into the central office she was so warm and welcoming she was truly a great lady, a tremendous educator, and I think uh, Wayne Warner said it best this morning when we heard it, you know, just she loved people who loved kids is what he said, and uh, one of the most generous people that you could ever come across. So it's a uh, tremendous, I think, loss to our school system because they all kept in touch and 
wanted to know how things were going with the kids and we would periodically talk with them and keep them abreast. So these were wonderful people who contributed many years of their lives and their passion to the students here in St. Bernard Parish. So they're truly going to be missed. Mr. Long? Also on a personal note uh, with Ms. Renshaw, uh, Many years ago, I had to uh, make a speech uh, as chairman of safety committee at Murphy Oil. And uh, I didn't know what to say to this group of about 800 people. So <laughs> I went to Ms. Renshaw and asked her to help me uh, write a speech. And uh, she did. And uh, it went over so so great that the, uh, the president of Murphy Oil, uh, Mr. Murphy, came up to me and said, uh, you did a great job, you know. Thank you for your comments. So, but she, you're right. She was a special, special, special lady. lady. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Long. All righty. Next item on the agenda is a motion to incorporate the report of the general committee meeting into the minutes of the August regular monthly meeting. So moved. This is a motion by Mr. Warner. <laughs> Second by Ms. Lemoyne. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Next item is, are the personnel changes and those that are highlighted are the new ones since the committee meeting. I'll give you a minute to look at those. Any questions? Okay. And we do not take action on this item. It's just for information. All righty. Next item on the agenda is a motion to adopt the new or changed policies recommended by the committee. And they are II, which is the testing program, EBBD, emergency closing of schools, GAE, non title non-Title IX, Complaints, Grievances, GAAA, Equal Opportunity Employment, JAAA, Title Non-Sexual Harassment, JCEA, Sexually Related Student Misconduct, GAMC, Investigations, GAEAA, Title Seven Employee Sexual Harassment, and JD, Discipline. Is there a motion on the floor at this time? Okay, there's a motion by Mr. England, seconded by Ms. Jackson. Any discussion? And we did discuss these at the committee meeting. There being no discussion, all in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposition? Motion carries. Okay, next item is the adopt, adoption of the 2020 ad valorem millages. There was a recommendation by the committee. So moved. Okay, there's a motion by Mr. Long, seconded by Mr. Warner. I think this was read in the minutes of the committee meeting. Should we read it again? Um, since this is. Why don't we do that? Just. Yeah. To be because there are strict timelines about this, and then we can do a roll call vote. Okay. Okay. Mr. Um, Fernandez, did you want to come up? Uh, did you have anything? That, do you have anything? Um, would you come up to the podium, please? Putting you on the spot again. <laughs> you want to explain again to, um, the reason for this, Mr. Fernandez, please? Okay. Every year, the board adopts their uh, Avalor millages to be applied to the property values in the parish uh, at the end of the year when the uh, uh, property bills are sent out. This year is a reassessment year. Every four years, the state of Louisiana requires reassessment of all properties in every parish. 
uh, and then the millages are adjusted either upwards or downwards to a revenue neutral level so that you're earning the same or you generating the same amount of revenues as you had the previous year. When the reassessment was done in St. Bernard Parish this year, the total property, the taxable property values decreased slightly. So our reassess our adjusted millage rates have increased slightly from 41.22 mills to 42.11 mills. So since they are adjusted automatically upward to the adjusted rate, there's no need for a roll forward, or we can't roll forward, it's automatically roll forward if y'all adopt this millage. So this is just the normal process of the board adopting its millages to be, appri be applied to the property values. And it does require a voice vote when you take your vote. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Fernandez. Anyone else? Um, any questions or statements? Okay, I'll read the, um, the resolution into the minutes. Be it resolved that the following millages are hereby levied on the 2020 tax roll on all property subject to taxation by the St. Bernard Parish School Board. School District Constitutional Millage is 3.91. School District Operational, 9.64 mills. School District Operational, 3.13 mills. School District Operational, 19.81 mills. School District Maintenance, 5.62 mills. Be it further resolved that the proper administrative officials of the Parish of St. Bernard, State of Louisiana, be and they are hereby empowered, authorized, and directed to spread said taxes as herein above set forth upon the assessment roll of said parish for the year 2020, and to make the collection of taxes imposed for and on behalf of the taxing authority according to law, and that the taxes herein levied shall become a permanent lien and privilege on all property subject to taxation as herein set forth, and collection thereof shall be enforceable in the manner provided by law. The foregoing resolution was read in full. The roll was called on the adoption thereof, and the resolution will be adopted by the following vote, votes. And then this, to certify it, um, I have by certify that the foregoing is a true and exact copy of the resolution adopted at the board meeting held on August 25th, at which meeting a quorum present and voting. St. Bernard Parish School Board, Parish of St. Bernard, Louisiana, this 25th day of August 2020. Roll call vote, please, on this item. Ms. Acevedo? Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Campbell is not with us. Mr. Egan? Four. Ms. Jackson? Four. Ms. Lemoyne? Four. Mr. England? Four. Ms. Dysart? Four. Mr. Long? Four. Mr. Smith is not with us. Mr. Warner? Four. And Ms. White? Four. Okay, motion 9-4 and uh, two absences. Thank you, Ms. Vote. Thank you, Mr. Fernandez. Yes. Okay, next item is a motion to approve the Louisiana Compliance Questionnaire. There was a recommendation by the committee. So moved. There's a motion by Mr. Warner. I'll second. Seconded by Ms. White. Any discussion? There being no discussion, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposition? Motion carries. Okay. Next item on the agenda are <coughs> items to be placed on the agenda of the next committee meeting. Does anyone have any at this time? Okay, and we always have until the committee meeting to place items on the agenda. Okay, next item, superintendent's recommendations. Ms. Voce? Um, just a couple of updates. Uh, Mr. Warner had asked about the uh, construction projects we had going. The overhang outside the Ninth Grade Academy has been completed, and they're very thankful that that has gotten done um, prior to the students arriving this year. The roof on the Trist Gym, uh, the, it has been... The main part of it has been completed. The gym is able to be utilized. 
and the finishing touches on the roofing itself being done as we speak so it's very shortly will be completed uh, the property adjacent to a cost uh, that we were developing as an additional green space for Lacoste was a lot that we had taken over from parish government and the fencing has been put around the sod has been laid uh, I was talking with Miss Jackson earlier and she has actually seen it so the railings have been put up in the basketball goals and it's just about completed and usable for our students so we're in good shape on those three projects that we were doing this summer even with the rain that came in the last few weeks and of course then the situation this past week but school was off to a good start as we said in the opening um, we've got a little over 30 percent of our students completely virtually learning and that started last Monday on the 17th and our students um, in person learning started on the 11th as we all know the last couple of days we've been out of school because of uh, Marco but we are resuming school tomorrow and keeping a close watch on Hurricane Laura um, but in talking with the local and state OEP officials and our parish government officials we feel that safe to resume school tomorrow we'll keep a close watch if anything develops later on in the day that would impact Thursday then we'll make adjustments at that time but school will be open tomorrow Mr. Dewey has gone through all of our buildings today he and his crew to make sure that all the storm preparations he has kind of undid them you know make him ready for the kids to arrive tomorrow we don't have any issues whatsoever and the buildings are fine and ready um, for occupancy tomorrow we all know that this is a very emotional week for the community with um, the 15th anniversary of Hurricane Katrina Saturday uh, usually we have our day of reflection breakfast which we could not have this year because of the restrictions on people gathering uh, we're going to be doing just a, a short presentation on um, in fact over the course of the year we're going to be doing something a little bit different this year it's going to be called something like 15 and 15 so 15 minute segments each month as the year progresses so at the end of this week for Hurricane Katrina we're going to do a little 15 minute presentation and do some highlights of our past 14 breakfasts day of reflection breakfasts to show and then over the course of the year we're going to be highlighting different parts of the school system we'll be looking at the school board as one in terms of leadership and policies we'll do something on that we're going to do a program on our buildings a program on our programs that we're offering uh, to the kids on our school leaders and different aspects of the school system and we'll be doing that on a monthly basis each month to showcase our kids our programs our buildings and our communities we'll do something on our partnerships as well so instead of focusing on that one day event we're going to look at it as a year-long event with much like smaller segments on a month-to-month -month basis okay and those segments miss voce those segments will air on on our um on pen yes TV. it'll air on pen tv mm -hmm. um and they're putting together the first one now which will be a review and a look back at the past 14 years into this 15th anniversary and we'll do it in 15 minute segments so it'll be um, I think snapshots of what has happened over the past 15 years throughout our school system from every different aspect the rebuilding of the infrastructure the rebuilding of our programs and what we offer the partnerships that we've developed within the community and the different organizations the actual school leaders that are within our organizations and our school board and policies that 
you know, y'all have developed and the plans that have brought us to the point where we are today. Sounds great. Thank you, Ms. Voce. All right. Okay. Um, before we adjourn, I just want to um, give a shout out and kudos to all of us, our school personnel. They are resilient and they have been handling this, you know, epidemic COVID um, in the best way possible for our, our students. So a big thank you to the teachers, our staff members, the support staff, um, our bus drivers, our cafeteria ladies, and all who work for the system. Of course, our, our um, superintendent, assistant superintendent, superintendent, and all of our um, central office workers. Um, you know, the schools for what we've been handed are doing very well and the, the students have really gotten the hang of it and they're doing great um you know with the mask and washing all the time and you know so they're you now big shout out to, to everyone in the school system for making the best of the situation we really appreciate everyone cooperating thank you and may i say something else mr isard um, I've been asked this before, and, and I really just want to say this publicly, in terms of notification to the public, if we have positive COVID cases within our schools. And we all know that as uh, COVID exists within the community, then they, it will be brought into the school system. It's not if, it's going to be when and on different campuses for different reasons. Uh, we've already had at three of our sites positive cases. We have notified every family in the school when we have had them and then we have worked with the department um louisiana department of health in determining what are called close contacts the people who are interviewed in terms of who has been within six feet for more than 15 minutes at a time that's is defined as a close contact by the cdc and the department of health so anyone who is designated a close contact is notified and those individuals have to quarantine for a 14-day period so we notify them whether it be a teacher or a student uh it may be a it may be a, one of their family members and then they have to close they have to quarantine for a 14-day period uh if it is a student that we become aware of who has tested positive then we determine if there were any close contacts with that particular student and those people are notified and uh, quarantined and all the information is run through the Louisiana Department of Health. So I want people to understand that those notifications are being sent out. Um, and if the notification is sent out, we can't identify the individual because we all know that is a confidential medical situation but we can notify uh, the families that there is or was a positive case of a person who either works at or a student who attends school I would like to caution everyone out there if you or the parent of the teenager especially um, it seems like you know teenagers are very social beings especially at that point in their lives and they tend to congregate uh, we've had situations of a uh, youth group at one of the churches that three of the students uh, tested positive so from meetings within that particular group where masks were not worn or possible procedures not followed um, we also had a situation and i'll just say it publicly you know a cheerleading squad that had parties over the weekend and uh, one child tested positive so the entire squad would be quarantined for 14 days in terms of not being allowed you know to to attend they need to be considered close contacts and be in a quarantine situation for 14 days so I know how hard it is. Uh, we're hearing cases throughout the country in ter on college campuses where we're seeing at that point, you know, in your lives and you go away to college, that's one of the, the big things that you do. Go to the social gatherings, have parties. But in this particular time, 
that's where you're going to see a lot of spread of this particular virus. So we would ask, especially our teenagers in the parish, to be very cognizant of that and to be responsible and to try to curtail some of those social activities until we are in a better place in our state, our country, and really in the world in terms of finding either a vaccine or a treatment for this particular virus. Um, but I um, want to echo Ms. Dysart, our employees, you know, our teachers, our support staff have been absolutely wonderful. The kids, um, I'm impressed when you go through the buildings, they're all wearing the masks, they're all practicing the social distancing, and I think uh, they're getting used to the situation as it exists right now. So we need to continue that and not become complacent at this point. Thank you, Ms. Voce. Mr. England? Yeah, thank you, Ms. Dice. Ms. Voce, what about uh, Ochsner Hospital? Are they working in conjunction yes. with our school system? Yes, Ochsner Hospital has uh, been working with us. We have an agreement with them. They are advising us, the medical staff is advising us on um, you know, any medical protocols we have to go through not only Ochsner Hospital, but at the high school and at Raleigh, we have an association with the Methodist Foundation through the school-based health clinic that we've had for years. They're also in an advisory capacity as well. And we have a direct line, the Office of Public Health. Uh, Dr. Joe Cantor is the medical director for this region, and he's also the assistant medical director for the state. And we are in direct contact with him and his staff. So we have three groups of medical professionals that we can access at any time of the day or evening. Now, part of the agreement we have with Oxner is for our employees, if anyone is either, if they feel if they're symptomatic or um, we are able to have them tested immediately with results coming back immediately for the staff members so that we don't have to wait several days to get those results. And that has, that has been a, um, a tremendous benefit, you know, for our employees and really for the educational process as a whole because then we are knowledgeable then immediately if there is a situation concerning any of the adults in the school system. If there are children who are symptomatic, uh, if we do the temperature checks every morning, if any child shows a slight fever or a persistent cough or difficulty breathing or whatever, we send them to a particular room in school and a nurse is there to evaluate the situation. And then if that nurse feels um, that it is a symptom that needs to be further looked at, and a fever always is, mm -hmm. then the information is given to the parent about what resources are available to them and the child has to stay home if it's one of those major symptoms mm -hmm. until he's either tested or until his doctor sends something back saying he is cleared to come back to school. So if a child looks symptomatic, we must have some evidence that it has been addressed either through his personal physician or a uh, negative test result. But well, that's, that's what I brought up about the options. We're trying to do everything possible for the safety and the well-being of all our students, our, our, our personnel, for our uh -huh. school system. So right. until they get a vaccine, you know, that's all we, you know, right. as long as we follow those guidelines. We and we're following that. the CDC guidelines right. and the guidelines that have been set up by the uh, Bessie Board, that's Louisiana Department of Education, in coordination with the Louisiana Department of Health. Those two entities have come together and established the guidelines for in-person learning for K-12 to education. And we are following every one of those. Mm -hmm. And we took the further step, as you alluded to, Mr. England, of forming those medical partnerships with Oxner. We already have one with the Methodist uh, Foundation. And now very directly with the um, Office of Public Health. Right. Thank you, Ms. O.J. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Okay, anyone else? 
Okay, is there uh, a motion to adjourn? Motion, motion by Ms. Acevedo, second by Ms. Jackson. All in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 The meeting is now adjourned. Thank you and good night. Good night.